I will move ahead. Everybody all set? I will now call to order a special meeting of council on Monday, August 17th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Uh, I will now turn to the uh, uh, recording of attendance and I note that all members of council are in attendance with the exception of Councillor Akaji and Councillor Gumichel, who we hope may join us in progress. Uh, we'll look first to a, the, a motion to approve the agenda this evening. Also move. Mm -hmm. Okay, Councillor okay. Bishop and Councillor Grew, I saw your hand. Will you second? Absolutely. Okay, good. Uh, any comments on the agenda, Council? If not, I'll call the question. All in favor of approving the agenda as written, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. That is uh, approved. We'll now move to disclosure of conflict of interest in any matter before us tonight. Hearing none, we move ahead and the first order of business tonight is we will have a presentation by Chris Spear, our Chief Administrative Officer and Treasurer, and the presentation will relate to the uh, market wharf design concepts. Mr. Spear? Mr. Spear, you are muted. Screen shared now, Paul, or have to hit it again? You're, no, go ahead and you just hit your screen share. You're safe to go. All right, Council. So I'm bringing up again the St. Andrews Market Wharf and Market Square Rehabilitation Plan. This is something that's been on the table for a couple of years and it was originally presented to the public in 2018 and uh, as part of an application to the Government of Canada. And I think it was the Building Canada Fund at the time. So just a really brief history for most of you would know this and those that are watching is that the current original wharf was built in 1956. That is not a picture from 1956, but that is the layout of a wharf as of today. Uh, um, of course, we had that Chris, devastating- have Chris, you're you know. not sharing your screen. Well, I was really enjoying it here. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Better? That's better, Chris. Okay. So again, this is the original aerial, or this is the aerial view of the wharf, which is the pretty much the original layout uh, from the early 50s. Uh, but of course, everyone knows that there was a devastating fire in 1993. Uh, the important thing to understand, of course, at that point is it was still owned by DFO, the federal government, that the town was just a user, but the municipality did not own the wharf at that point. Then in 1996, well, I guess it was 93 to 96, there's reconstruction. So the pier head out at the end where the floating docks are and the uh, wharf engineer's offices was built with steel piles and cement and uh, wood uh, decking. The intermediate trestle, which is starting out at about 115 meters, goes out to the pier head. Uh, is in good shape and it was rebuilt with wood back at that point in time. But the approach was not reconditioned, which is the first 108 uh, meters of the wharf. Now, in the 2017 engineering assessment, it was brought to our attention that some of the approach needed the following immediate remediation. And uh, some of you remember that we've even had to have uh, closures because of uh, weight restrictions on the wharf uh, in the past. And it was everything from problems with the wood concrete deck, uh, the cross bracing, which are the uh, wooden board, or not boards, but wooden uh, timber that go on an X pattern, uh, the ballast boxes, uh, which are the giant wooden boxes that hold rock, and the wheel guards, which are up on top are the, I think they're 10 by 10s that are on the edge of the wharf to prevent people from uh, driving over. Uh, but the, most of, some of the work has been done, uh, and the town did it to endure continued safety, but there's still a substantial capital revitalization that needs to be done in order to bring that up to able to go for the next 50 years. So the next middle section are in need of replacement in the next five years, which are 20 cross braces, 
uh, 19 double collar whales and nine longitudinals. And the longitudinals are the uh, long timbers, I believe, that go from side to side. The double collar whales are uh, uh, that go parallel on the wharf and the cross braces are those exit patterns again. And then at the pier head over the next three to five years, uh, the steel bearing piles need to be coated in the splash zone to reduce prevent corrosion. So we did have anodes put on those a few years ago, uh, which are common on boats, they're aluminum. And they basically prevent erosion, but only before the water level. Uh, and they aren't effective, which we didn't really know until the last couple of years above the splash zone. So the remediation for that is a special coating. That's a couple of hundred thousand dollars to treat them all. Uh, for fender piles, several are in poor shape, including those that support the guardrails for the floating docks. And the fender piles are the, um, uh, the big round pieces that you see on the outside of, of the wharf that really provide protection from boats running into the structure. But as it says there, some of the floating docks that you go down to off the gang ranks are actually supported by these uh, fender piles. And so the guide rails that allow them to go up and down are, are connected into them, and many of them should be replaced. Uh, the new gangway was put in, I think, 2010, and it's had some issues that it's uh, through the winter, and it, the end needs to be reconfigured. It's continuously damaged during storms. It's, it's not a big cost to repair, but it should be done. And then there's several spots where the concrete, the concrete deck top needs to be repaired. So all this is, should be done over this wharf. So the estimated short-term costs over the next two to three years is one and a half million dollars. But, uh, but the reality is ongoing cost due to wooden structure in the world's largest tide would be close to four million dollars in repairs estimated over the next 15 years. And that's just repairs, that's not replacement. But there's other challenges you're aware of the rising sea level rise. And I'm sure most of us have seen either in storm surges or what we call the king tides, the water level is just below the, the top of the wharf, and so the waves will occasionally roll over the top of it. And uh, that's something that's relatively new, that even the king tides had a fair amount of leeway when, when I first started with the town 15 years ago, but we've noticed an increase in, in the, the level of water over the last decade that is making our, our is creating problems for our wharf that we may should have con concerns about on its usability. Uh, you know, going forward over the next 15 to 20 years. So this is uh, back in 2018, uh, CBCL came in, we did an open house in October uh, about this new rock design that we've talked about. And I'll just do a real quick video of this, see if it gets going here. So basically the first 100 meters of the wharf would be replaced with this new rock wall as a uh, as well as uh, Market Square expanded and the wooden seawall taken out and replaced with the armor stone, similar to the wharf. It is uh, widened here. Uh, one thing right in the corner of that current picture, that's actually the men's club or the um, Highland Quest building. That was just moved over there as part of the concept drawings and hasn't been, it's been discussed with the owners, but it, it was hasn't been finalized by anybody. We're just discussing it. Uh, as you can see though, it widens out Market Square considerably, uh, creating a wider public space for this and, and uh, more for the farmer's market for presentations. And in some ways that it reinforces that part of town and prevents any more erosion within Market Square. So many as you know, during the storm surge this past Easter, uh, right in front of uh, Dan Murphy's building, the old cottage craft, there was a big puddle of, well, a big puddle, there's a pond of water as water rolled over the market and settled there. And we're gonna see more and more of that as time goes on. So just some quick stills. So from, from Water Street, by about 50 feet in the air apparently, you can see the look of the wharf on the conceptual drawings. And again, it's expanded that the current brick is where, um, the current brick goes now, and that additional asphalt uh, goes towards the, the breakwater, lifting it up. So at Market Square, the new breakwater stops storm surges from going into the market. Top of it will be about half a meter 
above the current wooden one. Uh, and so really, if you're standing in Market Square and looking out, the top of the rock wall will be below the current railing that overlooks the water on Market Square. So it's not going to be going above that railing. So sitting from town hall or walking along the street, there won't be much of a loss of view along that particular structure. Uh, the new asphalt surface will slope up towards the new wall. Uh, due to cost, there isn't a talk of putting brick in there at the time being. Um, that's a substantially bigger cost, but it could be something that's implemented in the future. Um, and then, as we, I said before, the expanded out towards Wharf will create more area for use, for users, for the market, for parking potentially. And uh, it's something that'll just give us more usable area there without cutting into the tidal zone too much. And the cost of that project component alone is about $370,000. So we head back to Market Wharf, and this is really the component that uh, if, that we have to discuss tonight, is that there's this rock seawall style structure that is being proposed to go out for the first hundred and so meters. It will be raised by a half a meter, uh, which will allow for sea level rise and fight that over the next 15 to 20 years. And then by the time the pavement needs to be replaced, more data will have been gathered about uh, how much the sea is really rising. And if need be, it can be raised another half a meter. And at that point in time, the lower or the other two sections of the wharf will also be raised to, to deal with that. So here's a view from up above, and kind of on the pier head. Again, these are all conceptual drawings, not uh, blueprint. So for discussion purposes, and I'll leave this up for a second, currently that is a look of our wharf. This picture is probably two to three years old right now. And if you overlay the current uh, proposal before you, you'll see how it goes out onto the, compares to the new one. One thing that you do notice is the boat ramp is lost. Now, the boat ramp isn't used as a boat ramp anymore. It's actually too shallow, but it is used for access to the beach. However, we can either design something similar to what's at Indian Point as a staircase, or we even talked on that seawall that goes behind the Adventure Center buildings. You might be able to build a ramp style uh, structure that'll go down and provide at least access to the beach for those with some ability issues or if you're carrying a kayak or something along that lines, you'd be able to get down the beach with them navigating these stairs. Uh, another structure I'll bring to your attention is, um, we actually have what's called a boat crib. That's about, uh, I'm pointing at my screen, but it's not, you can't see it of course. So if you look on the right hand side of the wharf, you'll see on the left hand picture, you'll see a, a brown structure which is uh, a floating dock. And if you go to the left, there's something there that's just past where the uh, wharf hits the water. And it's for boats to basically dry dock. They can sit there and work on them. There's really no way to, for them to access that. Uh, while it's unfortunate that that'll be lost, it's only used maybe 10 to 12 times in the year. And there's alternate locations they can go, possibly on the other side of the wharf too. And so we can work on that, but it's, um, it's, it, it's a convenience to some of the boaters, the larger boaters, but it's not something that is necessarily needed. But if you look at the overlay on the right hand side, you see that it isn't going that far out the wharf, but there's concerns it go the length of the wharf, and that's really not the plan. And uh, to get into the cost of extending that out to the pier head would be astronomical, but it would provide a full uh, forever type solution to the lower part of the wharf. However, it is a dramatic change from the wooden style piers that the town has been used to for probably a century. So again, the benefits was we raised the approach by about half a meter, which would happen immediately. And then hypothetically, it'll never have to be replaced again. Um, somebody may say, well, look what happened out at Katie's Cove, but the base of this will be engineered so that'll withstand those types of pressures that we're aware of. And again, as I mentioned earlier, another 25 years uh, when if the uh, models of the um, sea level rise continue up to a meter after 100 years, they can increase it another half a meter and that section will be good forever. 
So another reason we looked at that was to replace the existing approach with rock is about $3 million. If we replace just that first area that we're talking about putting the rock with wood, it's 2.9 million. So, and that doesn't uh, address sea level rise. And again, the wooden structure would have to be replaced in another 50 years. So in our world, you have to be really concerned about the long, long term outlook for the town. And, and uh, from an engineering and cost benefit standpoint, the wooden pier could be another three to $5 million to replace that again uh, in uh, like 2050. And so people have to be aware of that, or it could go up to 2100. But if we could find a forever solution, it's to the benefit of future generations of not have to spend money on that part of the pier a second time. So moving forward, uh, what brought this up to the for forefront again was that I was notified from a government department that this is being uh, put up for reconsideration again. So we had talked to council and, a, and a three or four applications for different projects had gone in in mid-2019. And uh, there's this and there's two or three others that all went in at once. And so they're taking that as the base application that if it had been discussed in 2018, rediscussed before we make the application. And it's now it's been initially approved and going through the assessment process. There have been concerns concerns raised about uh, what the environment will do, but I am about 99.9% .9 sure that if this gets approved, that part of the conditional approval will be due to an environmental impact assessment. And this could address a lot of the issues that aren't related to cultural, but things like what effect will it have on, uh, on the silt fill in on the front of the harbor? What effect will it have on tides going up? So once it's is blocked there is going to create problems going up towards the blockhouse or further up river. So that'll be part of that environmental impact assessment, which I'm not sure when that will take place, but I'm thinking uh, probably late this fall to early winter that it could start if we're taking this, if we're accepted and approved conditionally by the, by the funding partners. And the estimated start date would be late fall 2021. Uh, we wouldn't be running this project during uh, tourist season and uh, it can be an overwinter type project and it should be able to be completed in six or seven months easily. So we'd be very aware of that and make sure that when it got started, it could be finished not to stop any access uh, during that period of time. So once again, thank you for, for the opportunity to present to you and I'll take questions from council or whoever the mayor would like me to take questions from them. The best that I can answer at the time. Thank you, Mr. Spear. Uh, Council? Well, um, oh, go ahead, uh, Deputy Mayor. No, no go, go ahead, Council Bishop. Well, it's a huge project, but I think we need to move ahead with it if possible, because um, in order to protect the wharf and, uh, and from the climate change that we know is uh, taking place, we need to do something that's going to last as long as possible. So that that's my, my that's my two cents worth. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Bishop. Deputy Mayor Henderson. Yeah, I guess a question to start is, uh, Mr. Spear, what would happen if we were to go back to the partners and say that we would like to take a look at another uh, rendering as well, uh, taking in mind that. Uh, we saw two different uh, styles uh, that almost had the exact same budget. I was just curious what that process would look like at this point. To be honest, I don't know. We'd, what I do know is that the current application is from a climate change initiative and not on an economic initiative. So if we were to go with the wooden pier style, we'd have to consider how to make it a you know, climate change adaptable and uh, we could talk to them. So that would still change the look that there'd be an opportunity to raise it by another meter. Now that wasn't worked into that 2.9 million. I know that for a fact. And so what would happen is um, it wouldn't look as bad as Confederation Bridge, but it'd be that type of effect that you'd have the, the first part of it going up, but like in, in a bit of an arch up by half a meter, then going back down to the existing piers instead of a flat shot across from the ground level. 
uh, but I could certainly, if council wants me to ask the funding partners on that, how they feel about that. But I don't think just replacing it exactly as is is an option, from my understanding, because they didn't take it from the particular fund that we'd applied to, which was just a general building Canada fund. It was something that was geared at um, uh, climate change initiatives. So that component would have to be addressed moving forward, I'm sure. Could I ask, is the staff's opinion that we've approved this already? Yes. I don't remember ever approving this that, project. Uh, I think it's a very harmful project for our town. And I think we need a lot more conversation on this. So is the staff's opinion we've approved this? It, it is our opinion we approve this. And I'll go back to my emails, but there's a slat of two or three different um, projects when in, including this one, townwide internet, uh, trail upgrades, and I forget the third or fourth one, I think it was to do Rockwall uh, work around Indian Point that council all had approved. Um, and I hadn't, to be honest, I don't know if it's approved via a council motion. I can't say that for sure. But I do know that it was during my time as acting um, CAO, so sometime between early May and late August of last year, it was given approval by council that we didn't submit this without your prior knowledge. I can guarantee you that. I mean, I always remembered that Market Square and the Wharf were a very important project we had to pursue, and I'm glad you guys have been, have been actually really doing this and uh, finding funds, but I don't think we ever approved this style of project. I think really what we need to do is, is find out if we can actually get real options. Because I, I know that report we had, the cost comparison, didn't really do many options. It was just, what if we do the exact same thing we have now and this other project? That's not really an options analysis to me. Because I mean, we don't know what it would cost just to raise it a meter or a meter and a half. Because the, 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 the end of the war is gonna have to be raised as well soon if climate change is coming or that's gonna be underwater. But also, this will irrevocably change what our town looks like in the most important part of our town. And it's gonna be bad. It's gonna look like a rock quarry. And, and I know, I, I think for a while, I liked this project, but then when I actually went down to Market Square and looked at this, it really, we should not let this happen. At the very least, let's get the AutoCAD drawings, the renderings to show what it looks like at low tide with that full wall of rock sitting there. It's, it's really gonna disfigure one of our most important tourist assets we have. And, and I think we really gotta slow down and take a good look at this before we go any further. And you know, it's nice to have funding, but if you're funding the wrong project, you're just spending a lot of money on something you don't want and that's gonna hurt you. So let's make sure we get the right project in here before we move forward on this. Is it possible to get the AutoCAD drawings? Like, so we see it at low tide? Um, anything's possible with the right amount of money. And I'm not being a smart aleck, it just, you know, yeah. those, those components were made, they'd have them and they could probably render some more stuff. There'd be a bit of a cost to redo those drawings. But again, again, I can't emphasize enough, these are just uh, first scale types of drawings. And so, you know, they're not gonna do a, take an actual shot of, St. Andrews and add those rocks there so you can get a real good look. It's going to be that same style of artwork we saw during the yeah. presentation. So Because I think once these rocks go it. in, they're never coming out. And right now, uh, when I look at that overhead view, I mean, you showed it, and it was kind of the more schematic view. You've got, I think it's 130 feet width, plus the, I forget how long you said that the approach was. I think it was like 300 feet. 100 meters, you said about? 100, feet, 100 so meters. It'll, it'll be 100, whatever, 100 meters, or 300 feet by 100, uh, by 130 feet of just rock sitting on the lowlands going to our harbor. That's going to just, you know, there's one thing about we got to be open to change, but that's changing one of our most important assets we have. And as our industry slowly get a bit thinner, I, you know, with, uh, you know, MBCC is not giving a full slate this year. Hopefully they'll be back strong next year. But, you know, we really got to look after that tourist industry. We, you know, we, we, we can't take it for granted. It's not like we're a commercial wharf. We, we shouldn't look like a commercial wharf. But uh, 
that's all I'll say for, for now, but I think council really needs to approach this and we really need a, a public consultations on this. See what the BIA says, the chamber says. And because I think there's going to be a lot of climate change adaptation money coming out in the next 20, 30 years. We shouldn't be scared of having to wait a few more years to do it right. Councilor Krug. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank um, you, Councilor Harris. I, I Thank think you. Um, we need to be fair to staff on this one is that there was, Council did approve this. Um, in fact, I, I distinctly recall in 2018, before we had sat down for the budget, we asked for a presentation on the wharf. We got the exact same pictures we had here. Um, during the budget deliberations, we put in, I believe it was two or $3 million for this uh, wharf project. Everyone was happy with that. Um, then when it came to the climate change presentations, I believe that this wharf presentation was included there as well. So, and then we had the, a special meeting specifically for this, uh, this wharf presentation where we had the consultant come in and uh, give that, that, that uh, spiel. So we've had, I think, two or three opportunities for public consultation already. Council approved this as part of the 2019 budget. That's where the approval comes from. I can see where Councillor Harrison has an issue where I don't think there was a discrete approval saying we're approving this, this particular wharf project. It was part of the budget as part of, and part of the budget discussions. Um, and I think that the staff right now are just, I, I, I can understand fully why staff believe that this is fully approved by council because in my mind it's approved. Um, we, we gave the go ahead for this particular wharf on two separate occasions uh, and nobody raised the boo about it at that time. So I, I, I can fully understand why, why staff is where they are right now. Your Worship? Yes, uh, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, so uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you, Chris, for that presentation. And I, uh, I just want to say that uh, I, I do agree that staff has done absolutely nothing wrong here. Uh, we did do a public consultation that was actually uh, very well attended, actually, and uh, I do recognize that at that time, most of the uh, feedback was actually positive. Um, however, uh, uh, saying that is is nothing has to happen. We, we have an opportunity to look at this project as it looks like it's becoming closer to reality and really uh, assess uh, if it's what is truly best for a community. So first of all, the proposal does check a number of boxes. There's no question about it. Uh, the main one being that uh, this uh, solution won't uh, cost the taxpayers millions of dollars in the future due to replacement and regular maintenance like we have seen on our current wooden structure. Um, I don't think the average person actually realizes that the town debt has been consistently increasing and uh, with asset management, uh, it would indicate that this community needs to continue to make good uh, decisions on town infrastructure uh, as the current trend that we've been going on for the last few decades to be completely honest, it can't continue because we're going to be on rough times. Uh, our decisions today certainly will reflect the, uh, the struggles of, of councils for tomorrow. Uh, this proposal also does do a good job of, of uh, I guess you could say, meeting uh, sea level uh, rise challenges. It's a low cost solution that allows us to continue to build it up uh, in the future as required. So from an engineering perspective, I, I think they checked the boxes of maybe what was actually asked. Um, but now that this uh, project's getting a, a little bit more consideration uh, and it looks like it's getting some more attention in the future, um, it, it really is time to have a, a, a check as a council and not argue over, did we like it at one point? Do we, where are we going now is, do we like it now? Because we still do have complete power to uh, stop this. It's not a decision we made yesterday. It was a decision we, to our point, made a couple of years ago. And we did encourage staff to take it to try to get, see if there's any funding out there to to renew the wharf. And I think some councillors might have thought it was an idea. Some councillors might have thought it was approved. But again, we can argue over where it was. Staff did exactly what we asked, but we have the ability to change this project. Um, so this past week, uh, since we last talked about this, I personally have had a lot of time to reflect and uh, talk to different people in the community. And I'm, I'm not talking to the negative people that shoot down every idea, whether it be a 10 week barricade. Uh, people that actually see the big picture of what's important to this town. Um, 
And although I do like the durability and financial benefits uh, of a project like this, uh, I did myself, Andrew, uh, you'll be happy to know, stood between the post office and King Street Pizza, and uh, I looked right. down the wharf. I, I literally uh, visualized the drawings uh, that we have before us tonight. And uh, what I eventually, I, I literally stood there for 20 minutes. A couple of people thought I was a little weird, to be honest, but I stood there and, uh, and looked at it. Uh, and I started reflecting on our secondary municipal plan that we're so close to passing uh, and how we're actually asking home and business owners to help us respect the history of our downtown. Uh, and then I, uh, if you get specific into the objective of the secondary municipal plan, it reads to retain and enhance the architectural and cultural heritage of St. Andrews, specifically the historic business district and town plan and environs, to maintain the built character of the community for present and future generations. So I just ask council to, to think about what we have before us in the objective of our secondary municipal plan, because that's what I've been doing over the last week. Uh, standing at the end of the wharf and actually visualizing this drawing in real life, because we all know drawings in real life aren't always the same thing. I realize that although this project does check the boxes uh, from an engineering uh, feasibility standpoint, uh, it did become clear to me that this is inconsistent with our secondary municipal plan of our community. Uh, we have to live that document if we expect everybody else in the community to live it. Um, so I actually propose a, a number of things. Uh, we do need uh, other opinions. We only got one proposal on this project. That's all we had was one drawing on a major decision for our community. Uh, I'd like to see alternative solutions, keeping the visual unique appearance which makes our wharf so special. I understand it must be elevated, perhaps out on both sides, uh, but uh, I think Councillor Gumashell uh, even had a great idea with small kiosk with a nautical feel and coloring that could provide extra revenue and visitor shopping experience at the end of the wharf. And that would cover up this rock if you did want to go with that concept. And again, you could have a wooden structure that jets out over it to hide that rock, no different than you've seen a few patios downtown do, uh, that when you're looking at them they're visually quite appealing but also i think the town needs to consider the existing structure it's it's good for 50 years um, i know that we have some tough financial decisions to be but um, i think if you were to put a bunch of rock there and you look at our downtown I, I think that we would actually regret doing it i think it would take away from the unique and beautiful landscape whenever you're looking on the side angle of that wharf in the town, it, it's beautiful. And as you're walking towards the wharf, it's absolutely beautiful. And I'm not so sure if we did that if we wouldn't look like every other community. Um, so myself, I would like to see other options. Um, and I know that it's very late in the game, but I would rather pause than make a, a serious mistake for this community. And I know there is risk with doing that, but I, I think we need to ask for some second opinions or at least CBCL to come back and and restructure and come back with, a, with another proposal on uh, respecting the existing look of our, of our wharf. Um, but lastly, and I, I don't, I'm not blaming any current politician that is, is in government right now and other levels of government, but I, I do think that this needs to be said and this council needs to start doing a better job of saying it, um, is we have a bigger fight. Um, we, we've had a constant battle over the last uh, few years uh, with wharf users uh, not wanting to pay fees. Uh, but yet we have a community that's too small to support such a structure. We, we need other people to pay to make it feasible. Um, it's time for this town to remember uh, the fire that happened on the wharf in 1996. I myself was uh, a, a young uh, chap at SJDA with a full head of hair, um, but, and I was too young to understand what happened, but the deal the federal government made with the town of St. Andrews was they would repair the wharf if we took it over. And as much as I can't change the past, I will say that that was a vital mistake for our town. I uh, understand at that particular time, the town was between a rock and a hard place where it was probably take it or leave it. Um, but this was, to be honest, by the federal government, a complete scandal. To have a town on its knees with a wharf uh, that just burnt down um, and a federal government using the fire to make us take it over completely was unjust and unfair. Uh, I was a kid at that time, as I mentioned, but this was a pivotal moment for the finances of our town. It would have made more sense for the town at that time to say, we'll do the repairs, but you keep the wharf. Um, because 
here we're going to be paying for it forever, these huge fees. So I, I actually asked someone who's on the water a lot, and did you guys know how many wharves are in this area? There's dozens of other wharves in this area. The only difference is their community doesn't have to pay for it. And for some reason, the town of St. Andrews has to pay completely for their wharf when we are not the only ones that benefit from that wharf. In fact, most of the users, or at least half the users, don't even live within the town of St. Andrews. So to think that the taxpayer of St. Andrews has to pay for that when every other community has a federally funded wharf, it seems, it's unjust, it's unfair. And I think we need to make this a political issue moving forward, and we need to be very vocal about it. Uh, we should have probably protested back then. I remember as a kid, we protest, a bunch of people protested the arena closing. <laughs> I don't remember anyone sticking up for the fact that this town should have not had to take over that wharf. Uh, so that's my closing argument. I think we need to make sure that this council and the next council starts giving us a voice in that issue because if all the communities, again, around us aren't paying for a wharf, why is the taxpayer of St. Andrews happen to do it? Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Any other comments before we, uh, Councillor Groove? Thank you, Your Worship. I, I think the um, deputy mayor has raised some very interesting points. Um, one of the big concerns I have right now is one of financial sustainability. And I think the deputy mayor uh, alluded to that. Uh, quite frankly, if we go with a wooden wharf, I think it's a huge mistake for the town because simply we cannot sustain that over the long term. And I don't think we can delude ourselves that the federal government is gonna step in and automatically take ownership of the wharf in the future, no matter how hard or how loud we scream. Um, that's not something that they readily do, and there's no reason for them to do it. Um, so I think that um, we, we have to look at the big picture and say, okay, what can this town of 1,800 people realistically afford? Um, and if we keep going the way we're going now, um, Quite, we're, we're, we're going down a path, as the deputy mayor explained, that is completely unsustainable and is, is not going to be one that is going to be successful in the long term. So I think that that, that was part of the, I think, the logic behind going with a, a, uh, a stone jetty. Um, and I think that uh, when we look at the, if, if you look at this purely from a life cycle perspective, how much will the wharf cost over the life cycle of the wharf? Um, the stone jetty is the obvious solution by a long shot. Uh, a wooden jetty will cost a lot more in terms of maintenance, in terms of recapitalization. And I think Mr. Spear is being very generous when he says it, it will have a 50 year lifespan. I don't think so. I think we're going to be doing a lot more replacement before that time. Our so, current wharf is 64 years old that we want to replace. So I think he was underestimating. I seem to recall that we spent uh, close to a, a couple of million dollars two or three years ago doing repairs on it and fixes. So again, it's, it's what is the total cost over the lifespan that we're looking at? Uh, and I think that the wooden wharf is going to be much, much more expensive. So that's my two cents. And, and again, thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Grew. Mr. Spear, uh, I don't want to get involved in this at this point in time, other than to say, I think for the public, those that are listening in, could you outline to them, and we have not been approved for this plan or any plan, but we're, we're still in the running for the funding. Could you explain exactly what that funding is and how much of it would be our responsibility and how much would be paid by other governments? Sure, Your Worship. So the total ask was for about five million dollars and that was in addition to the um to the approach the other two parts of the wharf needed some substantial repairs to, to increase their lifespan substantially um and so out of that from what i understand it's an 80 percent funding so the town would only be well not only i shouldn't put it that way the town would be uh looking to borrow a million dollars to do it um i was told that if if we were successful, we could put it out over multiple years, but the substantial cost is that, you know, is whatever we do with the approach, and that'll have to be done probably one, one winter, just so it's not creating chaos in the next summer. Okay, thank you, Mr. Spear. I think that's, uh, I think we're at the end. Thank you, thank you, Council. That was a very useful discussion. Thank you for the input, and thank you, Mr. Spear, for your presentation.
So I think we'll now move on to the introduction. Your, your Worship, if I may, though. Yep, certainly. Just, Go ahead, Mr. Speaker. Um, I think staff will do a report and, and maybe present some stuff because right now we haven't been given any real direction but maybe i'll just answer some of the questions that were put forth by the various counselors tonight and at our next committee meeting we'll have we'll explain that and see if there's further debate or um direction that needs to be given because as of right now it's kind of just proceeding as is because we haven't been given any formal direction from council yeah thank you mr spear you're right um i think that would be useful to uh, just synopsize what was said and what can happen. And I think the major issue is um, I'd like to hear staff's assessment of what happens if we step sideways and look for other plans to do another, to do something different than what the uh, single plan was. And uh, what kind of impact do you think that's going to have on our funding opportunity? Your Worship, uh, could yep. this be a matter that we could put on the um the agenda for say the September meeting so that we can make a, a clear decision so that staff can have some uh, clarity in which what council's will is on this matter? Yeah, certainly. I, I think that's a good suggestion, but I think Mr. Spear is going to bring something back to us before before then and uh, and uh, So if Mr. Spear can get a report to us for the committee right. meeting and we put this on the agenda for a decision and that way their counselors can make an informed uh, uh, have an informed debate, and we can reach a resolution on this matter. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. I don't think we can just let this lie and mm -hmm. leave our staff with no direction. So I think we want to move forward. Uh, I don't want to sound like I'm money grubbing here and not wanting to lose the five million dollars. But quite frankly, I don't want to lose the five million dollars if we can come some to come because <laughs> because just as you said, whether it's this plan or another plan. There are lots of other places in the world that would like to have five million dollars, and uh, we should be one of them. Anyway, thank you, Mr. Spear. Again, uh, we'll move ahead to the introduction, consideration, and passing of bylaws and motions. Councillor Bishop. Thank you. Um, FA two zero zero eight zero two. Um, August twelfth, two thousand and twenty. Uh, U Union of Municipalities of New Brunswick 2021 Municipal Election. The background, at the August 11th, 2020 Union of Municipalities of New Brunswick zone meetings, uh, Mayor Nation and Deputy Mayor Henderson presented a resolution to move to a three-year term of council. By moving to a three-year term, the hope is that there will be more interested participants to run for council as it is a shorter time commitment, shorter term commitment uh, to reduce council fatigue and to reduce the instances of appointed supervisors due to council vacancies. Note, there is a deadline to get the motion to UMNB for Tuesday, August 18th, 2020. Uh, August 18th, that's pretty quick. Okay, motion. That council move to support a motion of the Mun Union of Municipalities of New Brunswick that the province of New Brunswick change the council term back to three years for the 2021 municipal election in hopes of attracting additional candidates. Thank you, Councillor Bishop. Can I have a seconder for that motion, please? I'll move. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Henderson. Uh, questions, Council and Deputy Mayor, you were heavily involved in, in drafting this. Maybe I'll call upon you first to just uh, further the explanation. Yeah, so uh, I know that everybody got the memo and I sent an email out, but uh, this was something that uh, I actually uh, started thinking about with, a, with the former mayor of St. Andrews is actually Chris Fleming. So him and I had a conversation and uh, we talked about uh, potential changes and uh, what it gets down to, I know that against that you guys have this memo, but there's uh, quite a bit of public actually uh, tuning in tonight. So uh, in 2016, the uh, municipal voter turnout dropped to 34.55%. Uh, the, chief, the chief electoral officer, uh, Mike Quinn, on CBC May 10th stated that the reasoning uh, that voter turnout was down is because of the high number of acclamations. 
uh, in 2016 in New Brunswick, 49 out of 105 municipalities had their mayor acclaim. Half the communities didn't have a choice. Uh, in 2016, 160 councillors were acclaimed, uh, while six seats weren't filled at all. Um, so you've got to wonder, uh, with so many few people raising their hand, if the four-year change that happened in 2004 really made us a, a, a better province and gave us more selection. Um, this year, with the extended term that we're all into overtime with COVID, uh, councillor fatigue has uh, set in across the entire province. Uh, Campobello, as everybody's aware, as an appointed supervisor due to council vacancies over the term, uh, you've got to wonder if a shorter time period wouldn't have avoided this altogether. And I even understand now that Graham and Ann is one seat away from having someone appointed to run uh, run their municipality. Um, so the the idea behind it is a shorter term would provide more consideration for current councillors to reoffer, as they're already again in into their fifth year of this term but I think more importantly it would open new doors to new counselors who have been afraid of the long-term uh, commitment um, so a three-year uh, term would also put municipal elections back to its regular election cycle uh, because they originally changed it to four years to line up with the provincial and federal elections well uh, here we are off of it naturally anyway due to COVID and then just my last point is that up until 2004 as I stated Councils were always three years, and at that particular time, there was a lot more choice when people went to the polls for the community. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Perhaps the one other thing I would say is that uh, the Deputy Mayor and I were participating in the Zone 4 meeting, and we polled a number of people from other communities in our region that were part of that meeting, and there seemed to be considerable support here in the rest of the region for bringing this forward to the union. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Council, anyone else want to comment, uh, please? Okay, look, I guess I'll call the question then. All in favor of the motion, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. And uh, Deputy Mayor Henderson has agreed to uh, finalize the drafting of the uh, if it passed and it did uh, we'll finalize the drafting for tomorrow uh, so we can get it and make, meet the schedule of the union of municipalities it will now go to the union and get voted on by the membership which means the provincial membership of the union of municipalities and then if that passes then it will be the union's uh, responsibility to lobby the government to uh, Try to make that happen. So that's the process that goes forward. Thank you very much, Council. All right, Councilor Bishop. Okay, the next one is um, FA200803, uh, dated August 12th, 2020. Uh, the subject is Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program. The federal government of Canada has released the new Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program. COVID-19 Resilient Infrastructure Stream. Funding for this program has been pieced together um, uh, other various infrastructure pro projects. Uh, funding allocation through the ICIP COVID-19 Resilience pro Stream, the Town of St. Andrews is eligible for up to 80% federal cost share. Eligible projects include Projects um, construction must start uh, before September 30th, 2021 and be completed by December 31st, 2021. Recommended projects. Coastal Link Trail. Marine Science Drive to 117 Joe's Point Road. Total cost $549,572 plus tax. The next project, St. Andrews Wellness Center, total $52,610 plus tax. The third project, raise Indian Point to protect infrastructure from sea level rise. The total cost $1,444,781.80, tax included. The, the next uh, project would be uh, protect town street ends from storm surges. 
The total cost for that project is $87,120 plus tax. And the final project, St. Andrew's Fire Hall Heating System. And the cost of that one is $40,000 plus tax. So I guess we'd have to, I assume that we would have to, uh, before I move the motion, we'd have to decide which one we're, we want to uh, go with. Well, I think, I think uh, we could alter that motion, uh, Councillor Bishop, just to say that uh, we need to get it on the, 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 the order paper so we can have a discussion of it. So. Okay, so do you want me to read the motion then? Yeah, please. Okay, the motion the, that the, I move that council support the application of um, whatever project to the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program for the Town of St. Andrews. So I've moved that, then we'll have to talk about it. Yeah. I have a seconder for that, please. I get a seconder. <laughs> Councillor Harrison, Your Worship. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you, Councillor Harrison. Thank you. All right, Council discussion. We have a number of options. Mr. Spear, could you just kind of explain how staff came up with those options? I know there's a report that Council all got. Well, staff sat down. So the the funding actually came in only in the or the funding announcement only came in general terms of the last couple of weeks, and so we sat down with senior staff looking at favorite projects that we know council you know, is on their radar already and combine that with things that are in their um, asset management plan. Came up with prices, you know, did our shopping and where we needed engineering estimates, worked that out. They come up with each of these. Uh, but um, there, I will say that based on uh, some earlier discussions about the coastal lake trail system, that probably this is the fund that is going to be used to see that through to completion. And it's probably staff's recommendation to go with that. Otherwise, there may not be another pot to get the money out of to uh, complete that section. Well, it says uh, Marine Science Yard 117 Joe's Point Road. They mean, of course, it's Randy Cove Road from Marine Science Drive. So, it's, you know, that section of golf course, um, or sorry, section of Brandy Cove Road through the golf course and up to Joe's Point Road where the new pavement ends. Uh, at this point in time, our, because uh, of adjacent landowners, the thought is that it's only going to be a pedestrian only or active transportation only trail up until the current um, uh, shutoff at the link. But that wasn't to bring it up to driver standard at this point in time. Thank you, Mr. Spear. Um, council, comments? ideas so, so there's no nothing limiting us from applying for uh, more than one project oh i don't believe so so my my concern is your wrong project might be chosen uh, if you have a i mean if you had projects that you're all happy with you know two or three then certainly we can put them in but if you had one that was the number one project i'd be concerned that you put in for two and the one that wasn't your number one got chosen. And again, Mr. Spear, Your just- Worship Deputy, or Councillor Grew. Sorry, Councillor Grew, I didn't see you. Go ahead, Councillor Grew. Thank you, Mr. First, um, I, I, in reviewing the projects, the one that jumps out at me is the um, Rays Indian Point uh, to protect the infrastructure from sea level rise and and when you look at the description of the project it hits a lot of bases and that it's widening the street which has been uh, long regarded as being very narrow going around the point uh, so it's a, a, a safety issue there it includes a uh, a bike lane which is good for the uh, the trail people it also includes a sidewalk which we have a lot of people that go around the point um, uh, in, in their daily walks around town. So I think it um, it hits a lot of the points and it, it's uh, a project that is age friendly, uh, climate change, uh, it, it's and it's one that uh, I think the people in the town, the citizens would very much appreciate. Thank you, Councilor. Can we put both that in the trail? 
And then if they're scared of the 1.5 million, they can fall back to the half million. <laughs> Very strategic, Councilor Harrison. <laughs> ask two girls to the prom. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Gumashell, welcome. <laughs> your, your Worship, uh, I think yes. that the St. Andrews uh, Wellness Center has to be put in there um, as we look to improve uh, a new facility. We, we do need new assets with it. Uh, and it is a lower budget item. So uh, to think that every community is going to get million dollar projects, they're not. Um, so I think it's important to have a, a diversified ask. Uh, my only uh, question is regarding regards to the uh, raise the Indian point. I just want to make sure that uh, that there's sensitivities with the Passamaquoddy are being considered. Uh, I don't know if there's any risk, but that would require significant heavy machinery down there. And I just want to make sure that uh, that uh, that was something that could be possibly supported um, by everybody. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. May so I say words, something? Go ahead, Councilor Bishop. Uh, um, this may sound a little strange, but I'm going to say it anyway. A number of years ago, we talked about paving down there, the you know where people walk and and all that. And at the time, I said this, and I'll reiterate it now. Um, for people that have joint problems, older people and things like that, walking on cement, uh, walking on things that are hard surfaces is very hard on the joints. Um, leaving that as a cinder path type of um, walkway um, is, um, to me, it's more in keeping with something that's rural rather than trying to make it into New York City or whatever. But maybe some people would like a concrete sidewalk, but I personally think it just kind of ruins the ambience or the atmosphere of that special place that you walk around when you walk around the point. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you, Councilor Bishop. Okay, any other comments from Council? Your Worship, Council I, have, I have a question on the uh, Coastal Link Trail one. And, and the question is, when I look at the price tag, is that to expand the roadway or is that to just do a trail? At Joe's Point Road and at the Marine Science Drive, uh, I, I guess uh, Joe's Point Road and on uh, Brandy Cove Lane. So essentially it's to mill what's currently there from 117 Joe's Point Road all the way to Marine Science Drive. And we pave it now to make it car vehicle friendly. The section that is currently closed off should be reconstructed as well. But it's basic. But as you're aware, that section of road is fairly narrow anyway. That it was never really worth having two cars under that safe. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'd say yes to both your things. That it's going to be the original width. What used to drive uh, two cars on it, you know, side by side. But really, the, the intent is to make it only pedestrian friendly beyond the current shutoff at the corner of Cedar Lane and Jones Point Road. Thank you. Okay, so I got uh, three three winners here. Is that what we're talking about? Is that council's uh, desire that we vote to uh, have staff apply for those three projects? I, I so tend to. As I understand it, though, staff is recommending the uh, trail. Right. And uh, we're also looking at the med center. I'm, I'm wondering if we shouldn't put too many, but I guess putting the big one in there too wouldn't hurt. But I, I, I think it was a few years ago, what was it? Uh, clean Water Fund or Infrastructure? One of the funds we, we were debating if we should put which one we should put in, and we decided to put all three in, and we got all three. So keep that in mind as we limit these choices. You never know <laughs> what could yeah. happen. No, and I and I think it's, uh, uh, Mr. Spear, I don't know that urgency is the word we should use here, but I think uh, there will be lots of people lined up for this new, this relatively new fund. I think uh, getting our application in uh, now is better than later. And you worship, from what I understand, that active transportation is a key component of this. So that, well, in a perfect world, I think the, replacing Indian Point would be um, a great project. As you have said before, there's some um, things we have to be careful of with with, with the First Nation group that's 
the Basel variety of things that um, we're trying to have dialogues with them and, and, and bring it to their attention. But um, that may not fly with them until um, we go. And if, you know, if the process goes through and, and they're recognized and, they're, and their land claim to recognized, which I have no reason to think they wouldn't, there might be some funding open to them to do that. So again, a few weeks ago, we had a presentation on the Coastal Link Trail. And the thought was that there's a lot of money available for that. And from talking, I think this is the money. So just be aware if, if we don't get money for that, that $500,000 is gonna delay us for years trying to get that upgraded. So um, honestly, staff at the time thought the Coastal Link Trail would be your preference, but we just put a few up there for your consideration. But I think it is staff's recommendation that if you wanna see this Coastal Link Trail completed, this is the source of funding that's going to get it done. Can we rank them for the person receiving the applications? We can. I, I don't know if that means anything to them, but yeah. we can you know, send an accompanying letter saying that basically here's our preference. If you have lots of money looking for other project, here's number two. But New Brunswick's component $65 million out of this specific fund so spread over the province especially with the cities it's not a lot of money it'll so, go quick i guess whatever your number one is what's your favorite Mayor? may i have a question certainly regarding the coastal link trail so is it um staff's opinion that the uh, the the um, road there that we're going to open up that was a road one time will never be a road that will be that will have car traffic on it ever again. No, is that, that is correct? Not, no, there was a letter received by one of the adjacent landowners that had interest in reopening that road up in the future, but that may be a two part process at this point in time. That it may be for only pedestrian and bike traffic initially. And then there may be a partnership reached with the golf course about expanding it in the future. That is my understanding is, is what likely the phases would be. But we still have to have discussions further on with the golf course. But they wrote to council a few weeks ago about that. that they would like to consider long-term plan to reopen that and make that access to the golf club once again. So that, that would be like doing the project twice then. If we're trying to open it up here with this project and then later on doing it wider or whatever you have to do to make it traffic worthy for cars. I don't know, I'm just Potentially, saying. but there's always the potential too that for a private landowner that wants it for their own uses, that they may uh, um, join us in the funding, you know, participate in the funding. Yes. So, and I think they hinted that at the time, that if they mm -hmm. were to do that, they would. Um, again, I can't crystal ball it, but that was kind of their suggestion about getting their okay and continuing forward with this project. Any? If I could ask, what was the rationale in the past? Worship of Councillor Akaji. Oh, correct. Sorry, go ahead, Mr. Groom. Councillor Groom. Oh, go, go ahead, ahead Councillor Akaji. I'm sorry no, for interrupting. Go ahead. You go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, if you could uh, enlighten us. Um, the CAO, what was the rationale in the past for closing up Brandy Cove Road and why was it closed? Well, so primarily is, as you know, Joe's Point Road and Brandy Cove are pretty thin pieces of road. Mm -hmm. And for you that have walked through it to the golf course, it goes up and down almost like a roller coaster. And so the road had to be upgraded one way or the other to be really safe. And the opportunity came that, um, uh, Huntsman, I believe, donated land where Marine Science Drive is right now. And that took traffic off all of that road and moved it out off the 127 down to the two institutions down there. And then an entryway was made into the Algonquin Golf Course from that road instead of from the front road. So that was the main concern. And going forward, we'd still have to take that in consideration because no matter if we widen Brandy Cove Road, Joe's Point Road is still a very narrow strip of road and as you know a lot of houses are very close to that road so there isn't much room to expand that to like a normal uh, 45 or 50 or 60 foot width that you typically see with the other town roads. Thank you. Aaron Ace. 
Can I speak? Yes, uh, Councilor Akaji, sorry. Okay. Um, hmm. uh, to reiterate what um, our CAO said, we were on the council at that time, I think, um, Councilor Bishop and myself, and the council of the day were happy to see that road closed, and so were the people, because Huntsman Marine Drive would alleviate all that uh, wear and tear on that road, and we wouldn't have to um, continue to upkeep, great, upkeep that road. So I think we decided, the council of the day, that that was a win-win situation, having Huntsman Marine uh, open Marine Science Drive. And so therefore, the other um, small road, Grandy Cove Road, was closed. And it would only be for pedestrian, uh, bicycle, whatever could fit through that little area. To go to cut across it was going to be just a footpath as we thought um i like the idea of what the deputy mayor said about the um you know going for more than one thing because we at times do get money and funding for more than one thing uh the postal link trail i know is a big popular topic but everybody uses the point i can attest to that having living on it and just because i live there it'd be nice to have that rock wall so my house doesn't go under the water but um and, and the wellness center we you know we still need work done there that we've been starting to do so i think putting in more than one project but not listing them because you may get it listed and as um, our cao said we may not get what our listing is what we want but at least putting in for them we may get more than one uh project funded so i think that would be a good idea and um with councillor grew's statements about a lot of people use the points that is for sure and the walkway i know again uh councillor bishop and i were on that council when they did the walkway around the point and we looked at paving it and we looked at just having the uh, quarter plus or minus which packs down to be very solid and that has been um very nice walkway around the town, not just teetering from the um, aesthetics of our town, which we are all talking about the wharf being an asset that is going to change. Um, we have to preserve it because it is part of our heritage and our ways. We do need the um, consultation of the other people, like you have said, council has said. I know lots of people are talking when I walk downtown or when I um, am anywhere, people approach me and say, you know, we don't need this on the wharf, we need this on the wharf. Well, we also need help to keep our wharf as we need to keep our town very um, picturesque and uh, tourist uh, attractive. But um, we also need to involve our people that are using those things too. So again, we may need a little more counsel consultation, but I think, um, we have to give direction to our staff and we need to do that uh, shortly or we will lose the funding altogether. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Akaji. <clears throat> Council, um, what's your pleasure? It sounds like we uh, are not, uh, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but it sounds to me sitting back that uh, we're not looking at sorting out to one application, but is it two or is it three? That's, it seems like we're all talking about the same three applications. Your Worship, I move, I move, I move that we sub submit an application for the Coastal Link Trail, the Sayers Wellness Center, and to raise Indian Point to protect infrastructure from sea level rise. Um, but I would, uh, again, just want, would like the town to reach out to, uh, to Chief Akaji just to make sure that that is something that, uh, that, you know, I, I think I think that we should do it. Yeah, I, I certainly concur. I don't think that's a problem. Um, all right. Second that motion. motion. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councilor Gumichel. Yeah, Councilor Gumichel. Thank you. Um, Council, any more comments? I'd like to ask a question. Are we going to prioritize those three projects as to number one, number two, and number three, or are we just going to send in the three and say? let the chips fall where they may i would perhaps not my call on this but i would say not to prioritize them and to send in our rationales for all of them so that they can hopefully figure out where where we're leaning if that's the case but i don't think we should prior prioritize them uh, 
Uh, okay. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. I think it's pretty okay. straightforward. The the uh, the one point five million uh, ask is our number one priority. Our second priority is the uh, half a million ask, and then the fifty thousand in that order. Highest uh -huh. to lowest seems pretty yeah. straightforward. You may be right, Councillor Goodman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> moving right along. <laughs> I uh, I'll call the question then. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. That motion is passed. Thank you, Council. All right. What's next? You may be right, Councillor. <laughs> This is the two I have. I think it's you, <laughs> Councillor Harris. So PE, sorry, PED 200501A and PED 200501B. And it's the Town of St. Andrews Zoning Bylaw Z20-02 first reading. So the background, the council and staff of the Town of St. Andrews have been working on the development of the new zoning bylaw Z20-02 and the following meetings have been held prior to first reading. So uh, May 19th, we did a workshop. June 15th, we did a workshop. July 8th, we did a workshop. July 20th, we did a public information session. And August 10th, we did a workshop. And, and I should also point out, because there's possibly a few of them watching, or maybe not, but we also had a steering committee that did a whole lot of work for the last few years on this. And we shouldn't forget to thank them too. But anyways, uh, so the first motion would be PED 200501A. And the motion is that council moves to grant leave for first reading of the Town of St. Andrews Zoning Bylaw, Bylaw Z20-02. Thank you. Could I have a seconder for that motion, please? I second it. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Akaji. Uh, comments from council? Seeing none, we've all been through this uh, multiple times. I think we're, we need to get this on the order paper, so I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, that motion is carried. Uh, Councillor Harrison, there's a second motion. Yeah. So PED 200501B, and the motion is that council moves to set the date Tuesday. Sorry, point of order, Your Worship. Yes. Sorry, just to remind you, you have to do a reading by titles because you've authorized to go to first reading. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Very good. I thought we could sneak in the second one and then go back to that. <laughs> I no, wanted no to one. bad. But... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Spear. Um, I'm going to read this by title, okay? Because it is 129 pages long, so I don't think anybody wants me to read every provision, including me. So I will, so this is the, uh, you all know what this is, it's the zoning bylaw, town of St. Andrews. So I will go through this uh, as I can. Uh, 1.0 is title and scope. Se section 1.1 is definitions. Section 2.0 is administrative and interpretive clauses. Section 2.1 is zoning classifications. Section 2.2 is powers of the town council. Section 2.3 is uh, special powers of the planning advisory committee and the regional service commission. Section 2.4 is licenses, permits, and compliance with other bylaws. Section 2.5 is metric measurements. Section 2.6 is zone boundaries. Section 2.7 is zoning bylaw amendments. Section 2.8 is uses permitted. Section 2.9 is interpretation. Section 2.10 is images. Section 2.11 is the use of italics and underlining. 3.0 general provisions. 3.1 is permitted uses and requirements. Section 3.2, number of buildings on a lot. Section 3.3, existing undersized lots. Section 3.4, existing buildings. Section 3.5, non-conforming uses. 
section 3.6 uses permitted in all zones section 3.7 uses prohibited in all zones section 3.8 uh, utilities and infrastructure 3.9 access to lots section 3.10 Mixed uses. Hey folks. Section 3.11, uh, reduced frontage on a curve. Section 3.12, lines and of vision at an intersection. Section 3.13, uh, accessory buildings or structures erected prior to main building. Section 3.14, uh, 3.14 height exceptions. Section 3.115, uh, setback. Section 3.16, prohibitions regarding yards and other open spaces. 3.17, building and structure projections, permitted encroachments. 3.18, enclosures for swimming pools. 3.19, power lines over swimming pool. 3.20, finished floor above grade. 3.21, garbage storage. 3.22, fences. 3.23, exterior lighting or illumination devices. 3.24, changes of lot by infilling or excavation. 3.25, keeping of livestock and chickens. 3.26, queuing spaces. 3.27, car and bicycle parking requirements. 3.28, parking lot and driveway requirements. 3.29, loading standards. 3.30, mobile vending facilities. 3.31, landscaped uh, buffers and landscaped areas. 3.32, set back from ordinary high water mark. 3.2, 33, development within the town plat and environs and historic business district. 3.34, licensed premises. 3.35, protection from deer. 4.1, general provisions for all residential zones. 4.1.1, requirements for row house dwellings. 4.1.2, private garages and carports. 4.1.3, Uses prohibited in certain yards, 4.1.4, landscaping, 4.1.5, residential development near a lagoon or treatment plant, 4.1.6, portable or temporary garages, 4.1.7, accessory uses, buildings and structures in a residential zone, 4.1.8, home daycares, 4.1.9, home-based businesses, 4.1.10, bed and breakfast, 4.1.11, boarding houses, 4.1.12, group homes, 4.1.13, standards for apartment dwelling, senior citizen housing and residential care facilities, 4.1.14, amenity space requirements for apartment dwellings, senior citizens housing and residential care facilities, 4.2.1, uh, service residential zone permitted uses, 4.2.2, SR zone uses subject to terms and conditions, a bracket conditional uses, uh, 4.2.3, SR zone standards, 4.2.4, accessory building height, 4.2.5, use of front yards, 4.2.6, minimum ground floor area, 4.3.1, SR zone permitted uses, 4.3.2, application of SR zone to SRC zone. 4.4.1, uh, SRT zone, uh, zone permitted uses. 4.4.2, SRT zone uses subject to terms and conditions, conditional uses. 4.4.3, uh, application of SR zone to SRT zone. 4.5.1, uh, uh, state residential zone permitted uses, 4.5.2, ER zone uses subject to terms and conditions, conditional uses, uh, 4.5.3, ER zone standards, 4.5.4, accessory building height.
4.5.5, use of front yards, 4.5.6, minimum ground floor area, 4.6.1, ERT zone permitted uses, 4.6.2, ERT zone uses subject to terms and conditions, conditional use, uh, 4.7.1, uh, uh, MR1 use, zone permitted uses, 4.7.2 converted dwelling uh, units, 4.7.3 MR1 zone standards, 4.7.4 accessory building height, 4.7.5 use of front yards, 4.7.6 minimum floor area, 4.8.1 permitted uses, 4.8.2 MR2 zone standards, 4.8.3 accessory building heights, um, the 4.8.4 use of front yards, 4.8.5 minimum floor area, 5.1.1 commercial landscaping and screening requirements, 5.1.3 accessory buildings and structures in commercial zones, 5.1 special requirements for auto-oriented uses and gas bars, 5.21 uh, central commercial zone permitted uses, 5.2.6 CC zone uses subject to terms and conditions, conditional uses. 5.2.7, uh, 5.2.8 use of front yards. 6.1.1 institutional zone permitted uses. 6.1.2 institutional zone uses subject to terms and conditions, conditional use. 6.1.3 institutional zone requirements. 6.1.4 screening, 7.1 definition, 7.2 administration, 7.3 signage permit, 7.4 application and plan, 7.5 signage variances, 7.6 prohibited signs, 7.7 .7, number of signs on residential properties, number 7.8 number of signs on commercial properties, 7.9, number of signs in institutional and green space zones. 7.10, sign area calculations. 7.11, general standards for signs. 7.12, standards for specific types of signs. 7.12.1, fascia signs. 7.12.2, freestanding signs. 7.12.3, awnings, 98. Uh, 7.12.4 street banners, 7.12.5 non-commercial temporary signs, 7.12.6 projecting or flag signs, 7.12.7 window signs, 7.13 maintenance of signs, 7.14 non-conforming existing signs, 7.15 election signs, 7.16 exemptions, 17.7 17, abandon and unlawful signs. 7.18, refusal of a sign permit. 7.19, revocation of a sign permit. And then there's Schedule A, Schedule B, Schedule C. <laughs> and that is, by title, first reading. Your Thank Worship, you. Your Worship, I, your Worship, I think I missed one. Could you do that one more time? <laughs> Not a chance, Stephanie Mayor, but uh, thanks for asking. <laughs> Do you ever have to read that whole act, the whole bylaw? No. I, I don't know. I don't think I could make it. Eh? Well, if anybody <laughs> requests to have a tag team. <laughs> we, will, we will investigate how to get around that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. There'll be a meeting in its own. You're working? Okay. Uh, just a, a quick, uh, the, there was two sections that were deleted. Okay. Uh, and in the document, uh, it's 4.4.1, uh, 4.4.2, 4.4.3, 4.4.4, .4 were deleted in our documents. And 4.6.1 and 4.6.2. And those are all related to the tourist zones in the state residential and right. in tourist, uh, the, the service residential. Okay. I just think they were they, they weren't deleted in the uh, index. Okay, got it. Okay. Is that related to the the, the new bylaw for short term rentals? 
Yeah. Hey, thank you, Councillor Gru. Uh, you're right; it was it was missed where I was reading from. So we'll make sure that that. Uh, okay, Councillor Harrison. Now, we, now we go on to the second motion. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> PD two zero zero five zero one B. That council mo moves to set the date of Tuesday, September eighth, twenty twenty, at six p.m. for a public information session on the Town of St. Andrews Zoning Bylaw Z20-02. Okay, can I have a seconder for that motion, please? I'll second it. Thank you, Councillor Akaji. Uh, questions, Council? If not, I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, that motion is passed. So that is, I think that's what we've got for on our plate here tonight. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll now move to question period. Mr. Knopper, do we have uh, questions? Uh, through you, Your Worship, um, yes, there is quite a series of questions and comments. So I'll take them one at a time and we'll just go through them from there. First question came up, it was more of a comment that the concept does not fit uh, the look of the town at all. There have been better ways to retro uh, to refit the wharf and keep it looking as it does now. We do not need more pavement and rock on this coastline, um, unless of course you are no longer interested in catering to tourism and the overall look and feel of the town. Second comment was we should rename the town to Rock Town. Uh, Mister, Mister, your worship, uh, point of order. I think I think it's for comment. It's for questions, not just for comments. If we're going to read all the comments, I think we might be here all night. If people have specific questions, then they can be asking questions. Question period. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Good Michelle, Mr. Knopper, can we just kind of zip through? For your, and for your worship, if that is the direction, we'll go that way. So. Uh, where, are, where are the users of the wharf uh, and wharf users ever consulted on the wharf changes? Yes. Questions? Just do the public information sessions of last year, not specifically your worship. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, da, da, da. Uh, the, the, re the, the rendering that I saw showed the whole wharf as a rock, uh, so perhaps that's long-term goal. How will the, this impact the huge tidal currents? So there were questions on how will the new concept of the wharf impact tidal currents? I don't know if we can answer that directly at this point. That is a good question. That is a good question. When the, when the existing, like the, I guess you could say the fire restored area was, it, it, when it's expired, are we anticipating I'm running that rock the whole way out? Yeah. I think, Mr. Spear, I think you commented on this somewhat. Maybe you might want to comment again, no. but there, as part of this project, if it goes forward in the form that it's in, there'll have to be an environmental assessment, correct? Environmental assessment. And the plan was never to replace the whole wharf with, with rock. It would just be too expensive as you get that far out. That would be to find structures that can raise the existing two components up to match the current rock, or the proposed rock structure. Okay, thank you, Mr. Spear. Um, uh, next, uh, as there were a couple of questions just answered there, question came up is, so when can the public have input, not just counsel on the decision of the wharf? Uh, I believe we will work on that coming forward. Uh, question was, what year did the town take over ownership from the, gov from the federal government? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was 1996, Chris. You can correct me if I'm mistaken. Um, uh, if we're just going to questions, um, that's it for uh, one more question. Secure funding for upgrades on the first part of the wharf seems to be the first priority. Perhaps uh, fine aesthetic details can be worked out later. So um, one question was, can the aesthetics be worked out later versus, uh, you know, getting the wharf fixed now for, for the concept? Other than that, the rest were comments, but I will mention there were well over 35 comments and, and questions on this. Uh, you've had over 110 people engaged and at your peak you had 44 people participating on Facebook. Do you manage? Thank you, Mr. Knopper. Uh, that's great. Uh, we'll now move to Councillor and Deputy Mayor's comments. Uh, 
Council. Yeah, Your Worship. I just wanted to thank staff again for uh, for all they're doing to keep these files moving forward. This was uh, this was needed and uh, very much appreciated. And uh, Mr. Spear, I really appreciate the presentation tonight as we uh, as we engage the public and, and bring them up to speed on more and more of what we're looking at. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Anybody else have a comment? Uh, uh, Your Worship, I'd reiterate the, uh, the Deputy Mayor's comments, uh, Council Member here, and uh, to, to the people on Facebook with comments, um, uh, questions are, are much better. Comments are better framed in a letter. And if you want to send a letter into, uh, into the Town Council, you address it to Mayor and Council, and we receive all that correspondence and it's dated and you get a response. So we're happy to get com commentary and, and opinions. But uh, I, I think the best form for that is either an email or an old fashioned letter, whereas, uh, whereas uh, specific questions are for question period. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gumashow. Um, anybody else want to comment? Uh, Let's get this Sorry? Sure. Yeah, I, I just wanted to um, advise the members of the public that the uh, the council is um, starting into their budget process very soon, um, thanks to the efforts of staff. So that's going to be something that's going to be on the radar screen very soon and something that hopefully the public will uh, participate in more fully so that council can have the, the input from, uh, from the public on this very important uh, document. Thank you, Councillor Crew. Um, anyone else? Well, look, maybe it's over to me. I just have one comment, uh, and this is based on Deputy uh, Mayor Henderson's uh, uh, little uh, uh, spiel, which was very useful about why we need to uh, change the term and try to encourage many more people to uh, put their hats in the ring to uh, serve on council. I just wanted to compliment you, councillors, and our staff, of course, as well, but councillors for hanging in there. Uh, not only are we all still coming to every meeting, uh, we're actually producing way beyond what you might expect in the middle of a pandemic. So really my compliments and uh, my thanks for uh, uh, the fact that we're all working very hard still for our town. And we're very troubled by the fact that the system as it is in place We've had some of our colleagues in other uh, regional areas fall by the waysides, and, and I'm not questioning anybody's motives for uh, getting tired and getting fatigued and having to do the extra year, but uh, we've all been working above and beyond, and I really want to uh, thank every member of council and our staff for keeping us online and, and uh, getting, you know, making us so product productive in, a, in what was normally a tough time. And I must uh, say, Mr. Knopper, uh, I've become a big fan of Zoom because we are getting out to more people than we ever got out before. So I think that's a terrific thing. So thank you so much. And uh, again, um, guess what? Seven, 7.33. Woo -hoo. I think we're done. I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> thank you. And a seconder. Second. Okay, all in favor? Yes. Good meeting, everyone. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Sorry I was late, but I had tech.